Hey everybody, it's your old pal Josh Ghoulish Clark. And for this week's special Halloween edition of SYSK Selects, I've chosen our classic episode, How Ghosts Work, which it turns out we recorded in July, weirdly enough. But it seems appropriate to release this Saturday, so I hope you enjoy it. And boo. Welcome to Stuff You Should Know, a production of iHeartRadio's How Stuff Works. Hey, and welcome to the podcast. I'm Josh Clark. There's Charles W. Chuck Bryant, and this is Stuff You Should Know. Jerry's over there, fiddling and futzing around. It's Halloween in June. Right. Remember when we had the horror fiction contest last year? Actually, this may be July. Um... Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, I think the 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 deadline for submissions was in July, and it was right. weird to be in that kind of Halloween mindset while it was hot out. But yeah, and I'm sure it was weird to ask the authors, or not to ask, but to have them get in that mindset to we like asked. write something creepy. We definitely didn't command. Yeah, you talked me out of that. Yeah, those are good contests. Yeah, also known as the contest that will, shall never happen again. Well, <laughs> we also ended up with the one that we're going to read this year, right? I uh, think. Yeah, yeah. It's a good one. It is a good one. Uh, you guys will have to see in a few months <laughs> what we're talking about. That's right. So, Chuck, um, I myself have never officially seen a ghost, but I understand you have a ghost story. I do. I've remarked about it, and I've said, oh, I'm going to wait till we do our ghost podcast. Well, here we are, pal. Is this it? Should I go now? Yeah. Okay. I'm not saying this was a ghost. What I'm saying is one night I saw something very, very, very strange that I cannot explain. Okay? Okay. You ready? Yeah. <laughs> I feel like she had music or something. Jerry? <laughs> that could probably be done. Okay. Um, so, Athens, Georgia, college, I would say, I don't remember the exact year, but it was probably 1994-ish. Okay. Um, my best friend and I, Brett, had, had gone out mm-hmm. and um, were going back home uh, and driving through Five Points. You know the area? Yes. So, we're coming from like let's say, the direction of campus. And, you know, there's a cut through if you take a certain road and five points that cuts you over to Alps Road. Okay. And people are going to be like, what is he talking about? I, I know what you're talking about. Just, I'm talking to you here. Uh, and so there's this one area where you go around a, uh, the road curves 90 degrees, and then about, I'd say, 200 feet after that, there's a four-way stop sign. It's a very neighborhoody area. I think that's like where Ray Goff used to live. He, well, yeah, Vince Dooley lives over there. Okay. That might be what you're thinking. So we go around this 90-degree curve, and I'm looking, you know, I'm filling with the radio or something, and my buddy Brett starts, uh, like, kind of joke screaming, like, oh, what is that? But kidding around. Uh And I look up, and in the middle of the intersection, and I swear, people, I'm not making this up, and I did not hallucinate it. This is God's honest truth. There was a, what looked like a 100-year-old woman Mm -hmm. wearing a black robe with a purple sash, diagonal across her chest and she was standing in the middle of the intersection holding a bible like this kind of uh on her placed on her fingertips as you would hold like like a waiter would hold a platter okay uh about chest level and she was sort of looking in the other direction with kind of a vacant look on her face like you have now or is it just she was completely vacant completely still didn't move an inch and wasn't like an a uh, hazy apparition i mean was solid and looked real 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 oh man that's crazy. <laughs> dude that was so freaky we pull right up on her to you know take that left and we're both kind of joke screaming but then as we get closer we're like you know what's going on here mm-hmm. but it all happened in like oh uh, 15 seconds. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't a lot of time to register, you know, what is this? We were just sort of kidding around. And we pull right by her and take a left, like, you know, this is her. We pull within feet of her. And she's on my side at this point because we're turning right by her. She doesn't blink, doesn't move a muscle. Mm -hmm. And we were going probably 15, 20 miles an hour in this curve. Yeah. He starts, like, he can't drive his stick shift anymore because he's freaking out. The car's, like, (laughs) jerking and sputtering. He pulls over. Probably 50 feet later, we both turn around out the back window, and there's nothing there. Wow. I'm getting, look, chill bumps. I know. I can see them. Uh, And to this day, I have no idea what the heck it was. And it was either a crazy, crazy old woman. Who is really fast. Which is really creepy and really fast. Or 
the most believable Madame Tussauds wax dummy I've ever seen. It was also really fast. That someone ran and set out there, and we didn't see it, and then ran and took it away. Right. I'm not offering any explanation. I'm not saying it was a ghost, but I have no recollect or uh, explanation for what it could have been. And it was the creepiest, weirdest thing I've ever seen. And we both described it to each other immediately, like, what did you see? What did you see? Right. It had gold leafing. I mean, I can't say it was a Bible because I didn't see the cover. But it, you know, had that gold leafing around. It looked like a Bible. So you both saw the same thing. You the after exact same thing. It. Yeah, purple sash, black robe, so silver hair. That is one of the um, pernicious qualities of a ghost sighting. Is that frequently people will see the same thing. Two different people will see the same thing. Yeah, which lends a tremendous amount of credence to something because if one yeah. person just sees it, well, it's a hallucination. Exactly. You were clearly on something. We were not. But that's what somebody could say. Sure. Both of you saw it, even if you both were on something. Right. That doesn't mean you're going to see the exact same thing. Yeah, and I, I'm, I wasn't like some big ghost guy. I'd never have had looked for them or say, oh, I believe in ghosts. It would just, out of nowhere, boom, there it happened. Right, exactly. Um, you can also go a little further if you're a skeptic and say, well, I mean, Chuck and... Brett. Brett just kind of were playing off one another's description, and they came to some, unconsciously, came to an agreement of this, you guys compiled the story and you saw the same thing. Yeah, impossible. Who knows? That, however you approach that, probably depends on whether you're part of the 45% or the 48% of Americans yeah. who don't believe in ghosts or who do believe in ghosts, according to a 2009 CBS News poll. I had never given it much thought, but after that, I was, I was definitely like, well, if that was a ghost, then I just saw one. Yeah. And I, I researched a little bit, but this was long ago before the internet was born. Yeah. And so I couldn't find anything and even looked yesterday just to see if I could find out anything, if there was some sightings or some old lady that had been killed there or anything. And Nothing? Nah, I couldn't find anything. So that was just your own personal ghost? Uh, maybe. Yeah. Or just some creepy old woman who was still and not blinking as a car barreled towards her. Right. Yeah. Either way, that is very unsettling. Either way. Um, and that's a pretty good ghost story, too. It was a good one. It was not a mask. You know, I can say that for sure, like... We pulled up within feet of her. Mm -hmm. Like I looked in her face. And she, and she didn't move a muscle. Didn't move a muscle. Man, that's scary. It was the scariest thing that's ever happened to me. And we've told that story many, many times over the years. And mm -hmm. everyone's always like, really? And I always say, I swear, why would I make this up? Yeah. So that's my ghost story. That's a good ghost story. You can reach us on Facebook. At, uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. Is that it? Yeah. It's time for message break. All right. Oh, so. Wait, wait, Jerry. It's not really time for <laughs> message break. Boy, she left pretty quick. <laughs> So we're talking ghosts. Yeah. And uh, like I said, 48% of Americans believe in ghosts. 45% don't. Yeah, and I think a lot of people, especially after reading this, there's the whole, you know, I really miss my deceased relative and I go to seances. And I think those things, the mind can play tricks on you. But in my case, it was just like, those are the ones where I'm like, what is going on here? Right. You know? Well, it's pretty much impossible to disprove something or to prove something doesn't exist. Right. Which is one reason why belief in ghosts continues on. Yeah. But there's also a lot of um there's also a lot of factors in ghosts that uh, accumulated create this body of, you know, ghost belief. Yeah. What are ghosts, ghostly sightings, hauntings, apparitions, all that stuff. Sure that um, kind of over time have taken on a life of their own, or I should say have been around for thousands and thousands of years yeah, um, and have not been dispelled by science. Right. Um, so we're going to kind of approach this from like, you know, here's what people believe ghosts are and here's some scientific explanations for it. But throughout this, you'll notice that at no point are we ever going to say conclusively Science has proven that ghosts don't exist because it kind of can't. Right. That's not to say that people aren't using the scientific method to study ghosts. Sure. Because some are. And my hat is off to these people most of all. Yeah. So let's talk ghosts, man. All right. Well, uh, I just described my encounter, mm -hmm. which, like I said, wasn't hazy or weird. Um, well, it was weird. It wasn't ha like a hazy apparition. Right. But many times it's an apparition. Um, sometimes it's lights. It seems to hit every scent. Sometimes it's a smell. Yeah. Um, like Tracy pointed out in this article, like the smell of a uh, deceased relative's favorite meal being cooked in the other room. Right. Stuff like that. Or the smell of the deceased relative. <laughs> Just smelled something like rotting. 
<laughs> but it was just a squirrel in the wall. Right, exactly. Uh, it can be a song, can be flickering lights, can be uh, orbs in a picture. We'll talk about that. Or yeah. a ghost in a picture. Like, There's plenty of those. Hey, I got, yeah, you got to Google. It's pretty fun to look at those. Yeah. And there's some that are like, this one's not quite explained to my full satisfaction. Yeah, some of the if you look up famous ghost pictures, there's a handful that have made the rounds over the years that are pretty good. Like the the Lady of Brown Hall, I believe. Is that the girl with the fire? No, that's a good one that's too. That's a real good one. Um there's a woman descending a staircase like a ghostly vapor oh, yeah, yeah. woman. Very famous. Um the Freddie Jackson, the World War Two yeah. uh, World War One pilot died who was killed. Uh huh. Or mechanic, I'm sorry. He was killed and then he showed up in a group photo two days later. <laughs> yeah. Um, that one was explained as a double exposure, which, I mean, just the coincidence behind it is in, in and of itself staggering. Yeah. If that is the explanation for it. Of course, it also could be a hoax, but it's a pretty good one. Freddie Jackson is my favorite one. I think my favorite is the Old West. Did you see that one? It's like Boot Hill or something. Mm-mm. It was in 1996, I think, and this guy dressed up like a cowboy mm-hmm. and, you know, had his picture made but with his friend. And then in the back ground you see this guy oh yeah i did see like kind of peeking up uh, maybe behind a tombstone yeah um just in the brush yeah and supposedly these things are verified by photo experts and and stuff as having been untouched yeah so yeah because know. photoshop is making it way easier to screw with photography yeah but it's also fairly easy to detect too if you really dig into the individual pixels you can say well this is obviously t- retouched yeah. and especially these old photos when they're examining negatives it's not that those weren't photoshopped right i mean it could be light playing tricks but when you see a girl standing by the rail of you know with a fire behind her that one was explained as uh, the girl in the fire yeah that one was explained as a um just a sheer chance mixture of smoke and light and then our um, programming, like us being hardwired to pick faces out of anything. I don't know, man. That's it looked a, pretty much like a girl it, to me. <laughs> it definitely does, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, and then, of course, there's the funny things like the three men and a baby ghost, which yeah. was a cutout of Ted Danson. <laughs> yeah. Or the Wizard of Oz, like Hanging Munchkin, which was yeah. like a bird, apparently. Although I have to say, since you bring it up, one of the greatest short, you know, I love short horror fiction. Of course. There, One of the greatest... Um, ones I've ever read was called The Hanging Man of Oz. Yeah. It was like, um, it was, it's only just a few years old, but it's a good little short story. Really? Yeah, I About recommend that, that one. Yeah, yeah. It, this guy who like gets kind of caught up in like looking for it. It's good. Yeah. Good horror fiction. Um, this doesn't have to do with ghosts, but supposedly there's a murder captured on Google Earth. Have you seen that, Making the Rounds? No. It's a aerial shot, obviously, of a dock somewhere in Europe, I think, by the water. And it looks like a guy's like dragging a dead body in a big pool of blood toward the water. <laughs> but they, uh, I think they've debunked that. It was a dog who had shaken off and gotten the ground wet. Mm-hmm. And uh, people verified later, like, yeah, that was me and my dog. And Yeah, stop asking questions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was my dog. Someone posted it on our Facebook wall. But, I mean, you bring up a, uh, that's that's a really good. Like you see what you want. Exactly. Yeah. Um but, again, we say you can't really prove that ghosts don't exist, so people are like, prove it. Right. It doesn't prove anything. Right. You know? Um, if, if you can prove that a photograph has been faked, then you've proven it's been faked, but you can't just look at it and be like, oh, I'm sure it's a fake. Right. That doesn't muster. Yeah. So they we we covered photos. Yeah, they show up in photos. Well, why are they here? I mean, there's a lot of explanations. Like they're delivering bad news or good news. Right. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, ghost stories where um, the dead have suddenly appeared to a relative on the other side of the planet. Yeah. At the moment they died, like the relative wakes up the next day to find out that the person died at twelve fifty nine a.m. Right. when they just saw them sitting in their room at that same time. Yeah. Uh, so sometimes they're they're coming to say, "Hey, love you. 
see you in 15 years. Right. Um, or they're coming to say, you're about to die. Right. That's, that's the, another that's the worst long-standing kind of <laughs> legend. Yeah. Or they're about to say, like, um, it's, it's uh, 1999. Sell your Yahoo stock now. Right. That'd be a good ghost. Right. Um, you know, there's a lot of stuff you can you can say that people have attributed to ghosts right. and why they're here. Um, there's also that horrible um, experience as their last moments. Yeah, they, they are at the point where they died too young or uh, maybe have just gone back to their favorite place in life. Mm-hmm. Um, earthbound spirits, I think, is what paranormal investigators uh, call those situations. Yeah. Like they're stuck here or it's like, you know, get off my train <laughs> right. type of situation. Right. They're guarding a place maybe. There's uh, not one but two um, ghost women at the Hotel del, del Coronado in San Diego, very famous late 19th century built hotel resort. Oh, yeah. um, and both of them took their own lives at the hotel when they found out they were pregnant out of wedlock. Oh. Or one was married but her husband had left her. And so they're in two different rooms still. But that's an example of a ghost yeah. being tied to a place. Yeah, and um, we have an article on the site about haunted hotels. That A lot of hotels in, uh, well, around the world, but especially in places like New Orleans mm-hmm. and um, like old spooky Spanish, I guess the Coronado is probably one of those. There's one in, I believe, Colorado. The um, Overlook? Or the one they use for the Overlook Hotel? N- no, um, it's it's just like a plain old like regular cool hotel but it it has like a stream running through the lobby oh awesome yeah which is cool in, in and of itself <laughs> yeah and i don't remember where i saw this but um it, it was like on some tv show where this it's like a super haunted hotel supposedly see like the ghost waiter does it not i don't i don't remember i don't remember through the, ri- the river right <laughs> yeah <laughs> he had his pants rolled up and yeah flip-flops had the the caviar he probably was awesome uh <laughs> that was the best I could muster right then. I'm sorry. Um, and, you know, there are mediums out there who, uh, you know, if you saw the movie Ghost, Whoopi Goldberg, obviously, there's many times hucksters trying to take advantage of people, saying they can contact people, uh, put you in touch with your relatives that have passed. Yeah. Um, but I'm sure they're very... There are a lot of mediums who b- really believe what they're doing is for real, you know? Yeah, and what's, what's kind of ironic is... Um, there's this really great article. It's just a little quick editorial, actually, from the Los Angeles Times in 2006. It's called Is Science Afraid of Ghosts? Uh-huh. It's written by Deborah Bloom, right? And she basically points out that, like, we we used to have psychical research societies. Uh-huh. Like William James, the, right. effectively the founder of psychology, like, investigated the paranormal as well. Yeah. And conducted, like, extensive, real scientific experiments and along the way, debunked a lot of mediums. When was this? Like The 19th century, the Victorian era. Oh, okay. Um, and so part of this investigation into the paranormal mm-hmm. um, was not just, it, it wasn't just to prove that ghosts existed. It was just to understand the paranormal on its own terms and along the way say, this person is a fraud. This person is a huckster. Right. This ectoplasm is cheesecloth that they had, like, stuffed in their cheek, you know? <laughs> right. Um, and, and that was part of it. And over time, I think science has just kind of thrown out the whole thing, the baby with the bathwater. Yeah. And now it's just up to uh, kind of uh, the more mean-spirited section of s- the skeptical world to just go after and debunk. There's nobody looking for it. Right. There are very few people looking to prove or disprove the existence of ghosts. It's more just like this photograph was faked. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, and on photographs, I guess we should talk about orbs. Um, very famously, orbs show up in pictures. Mm-hmm. And uh, some people, you know, say that that is a very um, specific part of the journey of the ghost is when they are an orb. I have an orb picture, which I'll post yeah. on Facebook. Right. Emily believes it is her grandfather. Yeah. We, he had just passed away, and uh, the photograph, he was the biggest dog lover I've ever known. And uh, we had just finished our fencing in our backyard and our house that we bought. So it had been like six or eight months that our dogs couldn't go back there. Mm-hmm. So we finally let them back there, and I had a camera. I was like, i got to take pictures of this. And they start playing around like crazy. Mm-hmm. And in one of the pictures, there's an orb, boom, right there above the dogs playing. And Emily was like, 
That's Charlie. That's my grandfather. That's awesome. He's coming to visit. So I didn't debunk that, but uh, supposedly skeptics will say uh, that it could be a camera flash right. reflecting off of dust particles. Right. I use no flash. Oh. Uh, water spots on the camera lens, bone dry. Okay. Uh, defects in digital camera sensors. I guess it could be that, although it was a new camera and it's never done that since. Right. Or uh, printing errors. It was not printed or developed. Wow. So who knows? I'm just saying I've got a great orb photo that I'll post of my dogs playing. You raise a really good question, though. Like, I mean, what's the what's the value of debunking that? I don't know. Photo. It made Emily feel nice. Yeah. And still does. So why? I mean, what is the value? I mean, I guess we'll cover it later. Yeah. But there's just, uh, yeah, that, that question keeps coming up to me throughout the research in this. Yeah, this it's like it's article. not hurting anybody. Right. Um, so, Chuck, uh, I guess a, good, a really good question if we're going to talk about how ghosts work is what would ghosts be made of? Like we said, the Victorians believed that they were made of ectoplasm. Mm-hmm. Uh, today, if you talk to a someone who believes in ghosts and like researches ghosts and, and like that's part of their world, right? The, the prevailing idea is that they're made of energy of somehow. Okay, uh, I can't remember which law of thermodynamics state that energy cannot be created nor destroyed. Right, just transfers states. Yeah, yeah. That would be a pretty good understanding of what ghosts are if they are real so a life force that had uh, passed from a live person is right. now a different kind of energy exactly sure um midi chlorians what is that <laughs> this is the star wars oh okay. that was how they explained the force who are the midi chlorians i don't remember it was very disappointing though it sounds really familiar was it from the the newer three yeah yeah it oh, was gotcha. how they explained basically they explained what the force was and everyone was like oh why don't you go and do that i gotcha i remember that now yeah um it's, uh, other theories are that um, if they are some sort of energy, mm-hmm. th- they could also be some form of matter. Right. So maybe they're made of some sort of quantum particles or an arrangement of quantum particles. Right. Which I find kind of an interesting explanation because think about it. Ghosts can uh, are they're frequently said to be able to travel through solid matter, right? Yeah. Well, if you go down to the quantum level and you start looking at um, transistors, mm-hmm. There's a big problem in early transistor um, development in that individual electrons can pass right through the wall of a transistor. It's called quantum tunneling. Right. And um, they had to figure out how to use crystals to kind of block trans- electrons in to make them flow the way you wanted rather than just be like, oh, I'm over here now. Huh. So some people say, well, maybe these are some sort of quantum particles or an arrangement of quantum particles that we're able to perceive somehow. Right. And then the question I would have is, is there a consistent uh, explanation on why some people might become a ghost and some others not? And the answer is no. Or are they everywhere and some you just have a stronger energy force or something? Who knows? Yeah, because, I mean, if if people tend to perceive ghosts more than others. Yeah. And that typically from studies has been shown to be people who believe in ghosts. Right. Tend to see them yeah. more often or report hauntings. Um, why wouldn't they see them all the time? Yeah. Like why wouldn't... So, yeah, that would indicate that there is something about an individual person that would make them become a ghost. So many questions. Well, the whole unfinished business, like it died too young thing, I can wrap my head around that. Uh, like an energy force that was so strong that is now gone. Sure. Still could be around. Um, I'm trying to decide what part I lie in. Do I believe in ghosts? I think so. Okay. <laughs> so there's a dude named Richard Wiseman of uh, University of Hertfordshire. Yeah. And he's done a lot of research in uh, GB, Great Britain. And he has found some pretty consistent results that – People have generally reported the same things in the same places, even if they didn't know there was any ghost activity there, even if they did or didn't believe. Actually, if they did believe, they were more, like you said, more apt to see a ghost. Right. But he's had consistent results of specific places. Yeah, I mean, like he applied the scientific method to researching ghosts, and he he documented what what parts, what areas in an, a reportedly haunted place sightings were most frequently reported? And yeah, basically found that like you could you could map out areas where sightings were. Right. Okay, so that's step one. 
And then step two, we had people who who had encountered ghosts describe their experiences, and he kind of compiled the data. Right. Then he went back to see what other commonalities there were for an area. Yeah, like physical uh, conditions there. Yes. Like how cold is it? Is it humid? Um, let me measure the light. Let me measure the magnetic field. Right. But what he found, though, interestingly, was that um, there were specific areas where people who had no understanding of the the – history of the place they were seeing yeah. or had heard that the area was haunted had reported seeing something so there was something to a specific area being quote haunted right and people who didn't necessarily believe in ghosts or didn't know that the place was supposed to be haunted had reported not only that they'd seen a sighting or something in this building but in the specific area of this building so yeah what does that mean <laughs> It's a consistent study. Right. So, and Wiseman is a part of this kind of long but very um, small, smallly, sparsely populated um, tradition uh-huh. of, like, paranormal researchers, like legitimate ones. Yeah. I that, could get into that. <clears throat> man, when I was a kid, I used to want to go to Duke and, and study uh, paranormal or parapsychology there. Oh, really? Yeah. They had a parapsychology department. Oh, that's awesome. It was led by a guy named Joseph Ryan, who is another, like, legitimate... Uh-huh. Para- parapsychological researcher. Um, you could have gotten a TV show on uh, Science Channel. Yeah, totally. <laughs> uh, UCLA used to have one from, I think, 69 to 78. Is Duke still around? or No, they shut it down in, I think, the mid-80s, but it was around from, like, the 50s or 60s huh. up to the 80s. And it was well-respected. Um, William James was a- another researcher. Uh, as of the 90s, James Huron and uh, Rennie Lange are still doing research and writing books. Um, Harry Price is a very famous one. Yeah, I think uh, I've heard of him. Yeah, he, he was famous for investigating Borley Rectory, which is supposed to be like the most haunted place in England. Oh, really? And then now, if you want to get a degree in parapsychology, you can go to the American University uh-huh. or you can go to University of Edinburgh. Those are the two places, as far as I know, in the Western world where you can get a parapsychology degree. I, I could see that. The Great Britain has a lot of um, ghostly activity and paranormal investigators, yeah. and they're into it over there. And Edinburgh is supposed to be the most haunted city in all of Europe. Oh, really? Yeah. A bunch of dissatisfied Scotsmen roaming the bog? Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so we've kind of laid it out, right? Yeah, I feel like we've laid it out. Like we've got the... Um, we all understand what ghosts are. I don't think we really said anything that people are like, oh. Yeah, sure. I didn't realize that's what a ghost is. Right. Um, what I found interesting is that there's some really good explanations for ghostly activity. Well, yeah. Sometimes, Tracy points out, I mean, there's so many explanations. There's such a wide range from this person just hallucinated something. Right. And I want to say with that specifically, we're starting to understand uh, that hallucinations are way more common yeah. than anybody has admitted for a very long time because yeah. we are afraid of being put away sure. or labeled as crazy. But people hallucinate more than we generally understand they do. And specifically, grief is supposed to be able to trigger hallucinations pretty oh, readily, really? well, which would explain visitation yeah. by dead relatives shortly after they die. Totally. Yeah. Um, we've talked about sleep paralysis before. That's um, an explanation that you hear a lot about someone laying in bed. They can't move, and they're hallucinating um, spirits and things. Right. They think they're awake, but they're not. Right. Yeah, and you're incapable of moving. Yeah. There's also the hypnagogic trance, which comes at the onset of sleep and is yeah. a sort of trance that supposedly you can hallucinate in. Yeah, I've had that happen before. Like, am I awake? Am I asleep? Did I just hear something? Oh, yeah? Yeah, sure. You know. Um, and then sometimes it's just, you know, the, the window shut itself because it was loose and the wind blew it (laughs) or the door shut because there was a draft or it's cold in here because, you know, there's a draft, you know, a lot of times there's just literally an explanation, right? A physical explanation for what happened. So, um, you, you hit upon one of the hallmarks of haunting activity is a change in temperature an unexplained change in temperature in a, a haunted room. Yeah. When a ghost is present. And like you said, it's often like a chimney or a drafty window or something like that. Yeah. But people who investigate this kind of thing also often explain that uh, phenomenon by, um, a lack of humidity. Right. Lower humidity can make a, a room feel colder. Right. 
And what about uh, an area of a room, though? I don't know. I mean, it, I, I don't like that's that's a really good question, dude. How can an area of a room be number one colder mm-hmm. if if there isn't a draft? If it's not a draft, it's just like a static area in a room that's cold. Yeah. Um, if there's just a, a decrease in humidity, what causes the decrease in humidity that makes it feel colder? Right. And they have found that um, areas that are supposedly haunted, well, I should say Richard Wiseman found right. in one place that was supposedly haunted, um, it tended to be less humid than other areas. So that would explain the, the cold chill. But how is one area just a part of a room less humid than another? Yeah, and I'm curious about what kind of temperature drop people have seen, um, like how drastic it's been. I couldn't find any, like, reputable information on that. Like in the movies, you walk into the corner and you can see your breath all of a sudden, and you're freezing. Yeah, like the sixth sense, right? Yeah. Yeah, that poor kid. (laughs) Um, But also, I wonder then if it's not even necessarily a real change in temperature, although supposedly ghost hunters can measure changes in temperature in a room and that means that ghost is present or if it's just the sensation of a chill running through your body and it's not actually thermal it's uh psychological yeah it's your your central nervous system yeah i just got chill bumps earlier you know you did uh what about the electrical fields that's um a very common thing is for a paranormal investigator to measure uh magnetic field and electrical fields in an area um they will say that this is kind of proof that there's some sort of presence there because the, you know, the Ghostbusters e-meter is going crazy. Right, exactly. What do they call that? I can't believe I can't remember that. I can't remember it either. Oh, the one that, that Egon held up to... Uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't remember what it's called. We're going to get in trouble for that. Yeah, sorry guys. Um, but sometimes um, these fields can uh, cause wacky things happening with the brain, can cause hallucinations, can cause... <laughs> Uh, dizziness or other neurological symptoms, and they're saying that might play into it, the fact that you think you have seen a ghost. Right. They're, they're saying, investigators are saying, yeah, there actually is something different here with the um, the area's electrical field. Right. Electromagnetic field, there's something going on here. But it's possible that that's what's making you think there's a ghost here rather than there's a ghost here and it's affecting the field. Yeah, it's hitting your angular gyrus. <laughs> right. That's a part of the brain that um, evidently, if it's stimulated, you can get the sense that someone's behind you mimicking your movements. Yeah. Which and, is pretty creepy. I mean, we're, we're all familiar with the transcranial magnetic stimulation. Yeah, yeah. The thinking cap. Uh-huh. That was a cool episode. Um, and when you apply a magnetic pulse to different parts of the brain, different things happen. And one yeah. of them is definitely hallucinations. And then uh, another example of... Um, the magnetic field messing with us, I guess, is that a lot of um, haunting activity is reported at night, supposedly. Right. Um, and that's that, when it's scary. Right, exactly. That's <laughs> that's number one. Yeah. But number two, the magnetosphere, you know, the, the, uh, the part of the Earth's atmosphere that protects us from the charged ions of solar wind. Right. The way that the Earth is arranged to the sun, the part that's in darkness... Um, has a larger part of the magnetosphere surrounding it. So okay. More warped toward that, you see? So that might explain it then. Right. So Looks like a spider. It does. But there's a lot more um, magnetic field activity going on in the darker side of Earth, so at right. night. That one could be a stretch. Yeah, I think my favorite um, explanation that I had not heard about is infrasound. I think that's pretty cool. This, to me, is it. Yeah, it's um, low-frequency sound waves that you cannot hear, you know, with your naked ear. You won't notice it, but it can cause your eyes to vibrate. It can cause you to see things. Yep. It can cause a sense of dread. Yeah. Um, and Cracked, actually, one of our favorite websites, did a test at a concert, didn't they? Well, they, they reported on it. Oh, okay. There was a, yeah, they, they don't do tests, that's right. Right, <laughs> they report on tests. Yeah. But yeah, there's a great cracked article on it. Um, and they're talking about in the 50s a guy named Vladimir uh, Vladimir Gavro, uh-huh. a robotics engineer, noticed that like one of his lab assistants was bleeding from an ear. That's not good. And traced it to um, to this infrasound. Uh-huh. I think it's like seven to nineteen hertz, and um, you can't hear it. Like you don't realize you're hearing sound, but you're reacting to it. And like you said, it causes all sorts of like weird psychological effects, like a sense of dread, right. a sense that there's somebody else near you. Um, 
all the classic telltale signs of hauntings. Yeah. So much so that they've traced literal like hauntings back to infrasound. Yeah, the Ghost in the Machine is an article um, by Vic Tandy and Tony Lawrence that mm-hmm. the same thing was going on there, and they traced it back to a fan, and then they modified the fan's housing, the sound went away, and the supposed haunting went away. Right, exactly. I mean, isn't that weird, though? Like, surely you've been in a room before that you just had to turn around and run out of because you just knew that there was somebody else in there with you? Yeah. You have? I have plenty of times. Sort of. But I think it's like I've been in like Savannah near, you know, on the ghost tour. Yeah. Like, I'm highly suggestible. I got you. But isn't it strange to think that a sound that you can't hear was responsible for producing that? That like our brains are that malleable? That like just a sound we can't even hear, but the vibrations we can still sense somehow are having an effect on our brain yeah. and scaring us and making us turn around and run out of room. Yeah, and potentially twitching your eye and causing hallucinations. Right. So this sound has been shown. NASA showed that um, that uh, an infrasound at that frequency can make your eye vibrate imperceptibly. Yeah. But then something close to your vision, like say uh, the rim of your glasses or something, right. appear, your brain confuses and thinks that that's moving. So it looks like there's a little dark figure moving out of the corner of your eye. Right. Infrasound can actually cause visual and, audit- well, not auditory hallucinations. Psychological. Yeah, psychological dread. effects and visual hallucinations. So, and the creation of a sense of dread. Yeah. That's, that's spooky. Yeah. So, I want to get an infrasound machine and just like play it around the office. Yeah. You know? There may already be one here. Well, I don't even think we said what the guy did, though, at the concert, did we? No. He he played, did he play it under the concert? Yeah. And people were freaking out? Yeah. I think like a quarter of the people at the concert rep- reported feeling like horrible dread and like n- some nausea. Yeah. Um, Maybe dizziness. it's because it was a Dr. John show. <laughs> That's the first awful thing I could think of. Dr. John's great. I know. I knew you were going to say that. <laughs> he really is. I mean, like, you should see that guy play two pianos at once. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a, he's, a, he's a legend. What am I talking about? You're thinking of um, maybe Dr. Hook in the medicine show? Yeah, maybe. No, Dr. Demento. I was trying to think of the worst band I could think of, and that's the first thing that came to my mind. That's who you thought of? I know. Nickelback is out there? Yeah. It was a Nickelback show. There Perfect. you go. We can fix this in editing. Okay. <laughs> um, so what else? I think uh, the last thing Tracy has here is that um, the National Science Board has actually come out and said that if you believe in paranormal, it can be dangerous because that means you have reduced critical thinking skills and you can't make great day-to-day decisions. Right. That's kind of mean. That irked me because on the other end of the spectrum, you can definitely make the case that just poo-pooing out of hand as non-existent Anything that science can't explain, yeah, it shows a distinct lack of critical thinking, and yeah. even more dangerously, a lack of imagination, and that irks me to no end. Yeah, I enjoyed that you sent me the uh, skeptoid Brian Dunning. Is that his name? Uh-huh. His uh, article, and I kind of appreciated his approach with this. Was well, like, yeah. you know, uh, maybe that means there's other cool ways to explain these things, right? Like, don't poo-poo it. Maybe open your mind to other interesting phenomena that can be explained. Well, he was saying, don't just assume that if you just stop at it was a ghost. Yeah, then or it wasn't. You're, right. Then you're, you're pursuing, you're just, you're not pursuing any longer one way or another. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you're, you're kind of shutting down these avenues that could be really interesting and yeah. eye-opening. I appreciated that. I appreciated his approach too because he's a, a huge skeptic, but he's not. He didn't take like a James Randi esque glee or delight in yeah. destroying the illusions of idiots, you know. Yeah, and I think that's his deal. Period. Is people? Uh, I think he gets accused of that oftentimes as you know a fun killer, and he's like, that's not what I'm trying to do here. Yeah, I'm trying to apply research and you know, real science to things. I think he likes killing fun a little, though. Yeah, too. maybe a little bit. <laughs> uh, so that's ghosts. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Uh, for now. Ooh. <laughs> if you uh, if you want to learn more about ghosts and read a ghost story, uh, first, first-hand account of a ghost story from Tracy Wilson, you can type ghosts in the search bar at HowStuffWorks.com. It will bring up this article. And I said HowStuffWorks, so it's time for a message break, I'll bet. Stuff you should know.
Now listener mail? Now listener mail. All right. Yeah, uh, this is from a teacher. We always like reading these. Um, Chuck, Josh, and Jerry have been listening for over a year now and was never more grateful for them, uh, than about a month ago. I wound up driving three preteen boys to Space Academy in Huntsville, Alabama. Awesome. Remember Space Camp? Yeah. Great movie. Uh, not really. I never saw the movie. I just remember. You didn't see Space Camp? No. Oh, man, that was right in the wheelhouse. Yeah, it's still. No? Yeah. All right. <laughs> Uh, you see, I'm a middle school teacher in Morgantown, uh, North Carolina, uh, recently re- relocated from Decatur, Georgia, where I worked uh, at the brick store in Squash Blossom, Jerry's old haunt. Okay. Um, every two years, our sixth and seventh grade students go on a trip to the Science Academy, and we're a tiny school, just 24 kids in the entire middle school. Wow. Uh, teachers frequently end up driving on field trips themselves. It's about a seven-hour drive, and on the journey, we were plagued with traffic, rain, and car sickness. At about hour four, when tensions were high, was white and knuckled and began questioning my career choice. And I said, screw it. I'm going to put on your podcast about ninjas. They were mesmerized. Ninja. During the rest of our trip, we learned about sword swallowing, Bigfoot, and surfing, just to name a few. Mm-hmm. So thank you for saving us in our time of need, and more pointedly, creating a podcast that appeals to all ages. As a show of my thanks, I'd like to teach you a tried and true car game that, like your podcast, only requires uh, that a person be young at heart. It's as called you, Pass Around the Ether Rag. <laughs> <laughs> as, you drive, <clears throat> as you drive down the road, <laughs> as you drive down the road, take note of all the car models you pass. In front of the model name, insert any potty word of your choice. With middle school boys, and most likely you two as well, toilet, puke, and poop work marvelously. Uh, so we ended up with a few gems like the Toilet Avalanche, the Puke Avenger, and the Poop Fusion. <laughs> so many thanks and congratulations on all your success. That is Sierra Benton. Thanks a lot, Sierra Benton. That's a great email. I'm glad we could help you out. Keep yeah. you sane. The Poop Fusion. That's a pretty solid band name. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, we get a lot of email about how like, we keep people sane during their everyday lives. So. Yeah. Glad, glad to do we're, it. I'm glad we're helping. Uh, if you have a story about how we kept you sane, we'd like to hear those, obviously. Um, we want you to tweet to us, seriously, SYSK Podcast. We want you to hang out with us on Facebook because it's fun over there. Mm-hmm. That's facebook.com slash stuff you should know. You can send us an email to stuffpodcast at howstuffworks.com. Stuff You Should Know is a production of iHeartRadio's How Stuff Works. For more podcasts from iHeartRadio, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite shows.